my channel. Are you ready, kids? Oh, no, Captain! Let's do some tattoo studio red flags. So I work in a tattoo studio and I have been to many a studio. I'm a tattoo slut. So I don't go to the same studio over and over again. I tend to venture out like a little horny cat and go to different studios and different artists and on my adventures I have seen many a red flag and I have used my personal experience to comprise a list a nice long list of tattoo studios and tattooer so a bit of both red flags I am also working on a piece of red flags as well but this video is purely tattooists and tattoo studios let's do this fringe is as straight as I am great check let's go these are in no particular order as well so they're not gonna be like from the first time you step into a studio to when you're done they're just all jumbled up if they tattoo underage people this sounds really obvious but it happens. So when I, I'm gonna tell little stories with my red flags, just call me Walt Disney because I got many a story. My first experience of a tattoo studio, I grew up with tattooed parents so I knew what tattoos were, but my first experience of an actual tattoo studio was when I was 14. My friend and I bunked off school, we went to a tattoo studio in Ipswich called Fat Bob's, not there anymore. And we were both in our school uniform and it was a school day, it was lunchtime. We went into the studio and we just like, let's, let's do it, let's push our luck. We walked in, no consent form, nothing, literally walked in, school uniform, and we get a tattoo. My friend drew out a him heartogram right there and then on a bit of paper. And he was like, yeah, let me just get set up. And the look me and my friend gave each other was, And she got a tattoo. It was wonky and the lot and I was so upset at the time. I was like, wow, that's not fair. I can't I can't get a tattoo. I didn't have any money. <laughs> Which worked out for the best. It was bad. So when the tattoo was being done, I asked him and her, what does it feel like? He specifically told me, I'll never forget this. He told me, when you get home, boil the kettle, fill a mug with boiling hot water, put a pair of scissors in it. Now, I was no stranger to scissors at this time in my life. And drag those boiling scissors across your skin, and that's what it feels like. Luckily, I did not do this, because this is exactly the opposite of what a tattoo feels like. It does not feel like dragging burning scissors across your skin. It feels like a tattoo needle is going in your skin. That's what tattoos feel like. Tattoos feel like a tattoo. They're, they don't feel like anything else. The icing on the cake of my first tattoo studio experience, after the tattoo was done, he invited us to the pub. On He's that note of the no consent form, if they don't check your consent form, this happened to me last year, only last year. I went on holiday to LA and I was so wrapped up in LA and wanting to get a tattoo. And I was like, I need to document my time in Venice Beach. I need a tattoo. My friend and I walked around and we tried to find a tattooist that took walk-ins and we found one. We Googled, checked reviews, all the reviews were really good and we went in. So I filled out the consent form and sat down, everything was great, tattoos turned out seven out of ten. I'm a very uh, impulsive tattoo person so I love to get tattoos on impulse, much to my own detriment. And it wasn't until we were done that me and my friend Andrea walked out of the studio and we were like, he didn't check our forms. He didn't ask for ID. But because he didn't check my consent form, he didn't see if I was allergic to anything. He had no idea if I was about to bleed to death in his tattoo studio because he did not check my consent form. And yes, that is my fault. I should have picked up that sign and walked out. I was excited, okay? I was on holiday. I just had ice cream. I was excited. And I did vlog my tattoo experience if you wanna see all that. But yeah, he did not check our consent forms. This one I see on TikTok a lot. Not wrapping your machines. Think of your machine as a dick. And think of the person you're tattooing as an STI ridden alien. People lie on their consent form. Um, consent form, I've seen it in my tattoo studio. People lie. I had one woman a few months ago write, I am not pregnant. My mum knew her and told me the next day, no, she's pregnant. She's like five months. People most of the time will not mark if they have any bloodborne pathogens. As a tattooist or piercer, you have to assume that everybody that comes to get tattooed has bloodborne pathogens and it's your job and your responsibility to keep your machines yourself your future customers 
and everybody in that studio is safe. When you are not wrapping your machines, as I see it a lot on TikTok with the pen machines, people put, um, they put grip tape around them, but there is never any plastic on the end of the machine. How do you think bloodborne pathogens work? They don't just crawl out of the skin and lay, lay flaccid. They spurt. And when you are tattooing someone, you are dragging a machine along and blood and matter, I was gonna say fecal matter, <laughs> Maybe, I don't know how dirty you are. Blood and skin cells, they spur, you ne won't necessarily see it, but they, they fly like a bird. And they will go on the end of your machine. If your machine is not wrapped with something disposable, it's contaminated. And you will tell you the next person, you put your little grip tape on, but you won't wrap your machine. And guess what? We live in a world of gravity. That matter is just gonna go onto your next person and boom, you got yourself a lawsuit. Wrap your I need to get a job at the Environmental Health Agency because I'd just be walking around with a clipboard and a pen going, wrap your sh <laughs> Or a sexual health clinic. Like that would apply there too. If they have no healed pictures on their social media, I don't know about you, but social media is the way that I find my tattooists now. I do everything via social media. I got my blankie because I'm cold. <laughs> so you can probably see that, I'm really cold. If someone recommends a tattooist to me, the first thing I will do is look them up on Instagram and have a look at their work. But if they have no healed tattoos on their social media, this is a red flag. As soon as a tattoo is done, yes, it'll be red and a bit raised, but those colors will be popping. The ink will be settling in. The, that is the best the tattoo will look, it, you know, aside from a bit sore. Once a tattoo is healed, you are really able to see how good a tattooist is. If the ink has stuck, if the lines are smooth, you can see blowouts and scarring, you're very unlikely to see these things on a fresh tattoo, but on a healed one, you can see them. So I don't know if you'll be able to see, but I have a blowout on my finger. So what that is, is the tattoo is pushed down too hard and all the ink's just essentially gone and It's made my finger blue. It looks like I've been fingering Papa Smurf. The only way I can get rid of that is with laser tattoo removal. I cannot, you, there's no cream, there is nothing you can do to get rid of blowout other than laser. Because it is essentially ink has just gone down too deep and just grab me a river. <laughs> so if they have no heels pictures on their social media, it's a sign that they're probably not as good as you think they are. Yep, it looks great the first day it's done. So does my hair at the hairdressers. And then I come home and try and style it myself and it's not as good. Heel tattoo pictures are important and if they have none on their social media it's probably because the ink's falling out they've got blowouts they've given people scarring or people are not going back for a second time for them to be able to get a healed picture if they tattoo anything so we have a studio here quite a popular studio that tattooed an 18 year old they tattooed you know zombie boy the famous zombie boy they tattooed this 18 year old kid's face with a zombie boy skeleton it was very similar i did hear because the tattooist wanted it for his portfolio and guess what a year or two later that poor kid is paying to have it lasered off i think tattooists right i, I get it you're not psychiatrists as a piercer i hear people they're like yeah we're like hairdressers you sit as soon as people sit down in that chair they unload we are not therapists <laughs> but i think tattooists have a responsibility whether they like it or not to say no, that in the, in the olden days, you used to have to earn face tattoos. Now I'm not someone that thinks you have to earn tattoos. Like bro, I have reached my pain threshold. I use numbing cream now, just make sure it's a legit one. But I do think hands, neck and face should be the last place that you get tattooed. Now they seem to be like the first because of rappers and TikTok and everything. People wanna go out and get their face tattooed straight away and I think if a tattooist does that and you don't have any other tattoos, that's a huge red flag. They're just about the money. That puts me off a tattooist as well. So I am, I, I keep saying I'm covered. So I'm someone that could potentially be a regular customer. And I'm not saying like having me put off your studio is a bad thing, because I'm a pain in the ass, but earning a quick hundred quid from tattooing someone that is then gonna potentially put off people that would be more regular customers, it's not worth it in the long run, is it? If they don't wear gloves when they are touching your skin, 
like doing the stencil. I see this a lot in tattoo studios I go to and I see it a lot on TikTok as well. As soon as a tattooist is touching your skin, whether it is to put Vaseline on your skin, um, stencil, stencil, sticky stuff, the the stencil paper if their skin is touching your skin they should have a glove on now i know how expensive ppe is after covid the price of gloves shot up faster than neil armstrong in space if it keeps you and it keeps your customer safe and stops the spread of germs in this sterile environment put gloves on this isn't like a huge red flag this is more of a a personal hatred if they have long hair and they don't tie it up I just hate this. I hate this about everything. I hate this mostly though about horror films. When you watch horror films, like Ben, my partner and I were watching Final Destination last night. Final, I think for, for the Final Destination. And there's this one scene of the main girl, she's in her pants, she's clearly chillaxing at home, but she's got her hair down. I don't know about you, first thing I do when I come through the door, take my bra off, take my clothes off, put my pajamas on, tie my hair up. If you've seen a film called The Hunt, it's a really good horror film. And there's one scene where some, I won't ruin it, but one scene where one girl ties her hair up and, I'm just, and I literally, the first time I saw it, I went, yes! Because it's so, so simple, but it means a lot. <laughs> Plus you lose a hundred plus hairs a day. I don't want to be getting a tattoo and then suddenly one of your little hairs falls into my skin and impregnates me. This is a huge red flag. Bigger than my appetite for Cadbury's cream eggs. If they did a tattoo course. So tattoo courses are quite popular in the UK. We have a studio in Ipswich that actually advertises that they did a tattoo course. So tattoo courses are a couple of thousand pounds and you essentially learn to tattoo in two weeks. Now, as someone that works in a tattoo studio, I can pinky promise you, you cannot learn how to safely and correctly tattoo people in two weeks. You can't do it. There is so much to learn. An average apprenticeship lasts one to two years, sometimes longer. That's Correct, that's the right way to do it. In two weeks you can learn to tattoo, but you can't learn to tattoo. It's like saying in two weeks I can teach myself how to do brain surgery. I can YouTube it, this is how you do brain surgery, but I can't learn how to do brain surgery in two weeks. There is so much that you need to know other than the basic, this is how to tattoo. You need to learn bloodborne pathogens, first aid training, how to keep you and your customers safe, disposable products, how to not wear gloves and answer your phone. There is so much you need to learn that you physically cannot learn in two weeks so if you find out if they did a tattoo course please that is the number one reason to walk out of a studio it also shows that they don't care they don't care about the industry they don't care about f putting the work in they don't care about finding an apprenticeship because let's face it being a tattooist is a cool job it is. You get to look how you want, you get to nine times out of ten be your own boss. It's a cool job and they've just gone straight for I'm a tattooist rather than I enjoy tattooing, I've learned how to tattoo, I can safely tattoo, now I am a tattooist. I used to go to this tattooist in Ipswich all the time. They were my tattooist, they were the only tattooist I went to. And the last time I went to them, they kept me waiting for over an hour. I was waiting in reception. They knew I was there. They had drawn my design up already because they had already sent me a picture of the design and they were just chatting. They were just chatting with the other artists and the other customers. So like, I can't remember what time my appointment was. Say it started at 10. I get there just before 10. I'm sat down, I fill out the form. My tattooist comes in, they're like, oh, I'm just gonna get set up. I'll be with you in a minute. They go off. They, I can hear them chatting in the next room and they were there for an hour, just over an hour, chatting to the tattooists, to the customers, chatting to everybody but me. And I was really shy a few years ago, like I was about 18. I was very shy and uh, I didn't want to say anything. <laughs> so I just sat there like a good little quiet girl and accepted that this was my day. And after the tattoo was done, I was charged for that hour. I was charged, I was charged. And tattoos are not cheap. At the time, it, I think she was £70 an hour. £70 I had to pay 
for the privilege of sitting in their reception. And I did the British thing, I was like, I'm not gonna complain, I just won't go back. And I did, I have not been back since, I have not been back to this tattooist. And I used to go to them all the time, you lost yourself a customer. If they keep you waiting and then charge you for it, I mean, if that happened now, I would not go, I would not go quietly. But I was just, you know, I was still traumatized, and I was vulnerable and just, I see a lot of people post in forums like my tattoo was late, my tattooist went for a lot of breaks. That's taking advantage. You are paying for this person's time. They should be a professional and they should be providing you with the service and the quality that you have paid for. If there's not a legitimate reason for them being late, bro, I don't know. Complain, just don't go back. Do, do the Emily thing and just don't go back. <laughs> I don't, don't know. If they constantly move shops, there is so much drama in the tattoo industry. It's crazy. Screw EastEnders, there needs to be just tattooers. Okay, that sounded funnier in my head. And if a tattooist constantly moves shops, boom, you've found your drama. I'm not talking like every few years because that's a good thing to do because then you get a new client base. I'm talking like a few times a year. Oh, I'm at this studio. Oh, I'm moving to this studio. That is a red flag. What are you running from, bro? But equally, if a tattoo studio owner changes their branding, if they rebrand a lot, we have one here, um, what, Top Gun are they called? Um, and they're now Bear and I think they've changed to something else. Or they might have been sold and that, well, I don't know. If they constantly change their name, it's like, why you rebrand? Why do you need to rebrand? Because the old shop got such a bad reputation, they changed the name so people would hopefully think, oh, it's a new shop, but it's not. It's the same drama, it's the same sh it's the same rubbish tattooists, just with a clean front window. <laughs> oh, I hate that. Sleeping with customers for discounts. Yeah, it happens. No, it hasn't happened to me. I probably would take them up on their offer. <laughs> Joke. One of my friends went to a tattooist in Colchester and she got an underboob tattoo. Um, this was many years ago and the tattooist propositioned her and said she would get it a bit cheaper if she took her whole top off. There is a line and there is a time and a place for it. When you're getting tattooed, you're vulnerable. You're in pain and you know, you're about to be bankrupt because that shit is expensive. And if someone says to you, I can do this a little bit cheaper if you know you want to flash me, that's not okay. There is a, um, a studio here, not a tattoo studio, a piercing studio, that has done similar things. It's not okay. That person is in a professional position and that is taking advantage of you. At no point should you ever have to do anything for your tattoo to be cheaper and you know it sounds like funny like oh flash me your tits and i'll give you a free tattoo it's not okay touching their phones with their gloves on touching anything with your gloves on but touching their phones seems to be the biggest one i will see as a tattooist your phone should not be anywhere near your area your tattooing area where your inks are where your machine is that is a clean sterile environment your phone is not and what I see a lot of tattooists do is they'll be tattooing with their hand um, and then their phone will ring and then they'll do this. I'm sorry, do we live in a world where bacteria doesn't go to your knuckles? Do you know what, let's do a demonstration. Let's do a freaking demonstration. So, skin cells, they have spurred onto my finger. Blah. Can't see them because they're too small. And then I've got my gloved hand. Oh, my phone's ringing. <laughs> Someone likes me. That must be nice. Dip, 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 dip. Yep, hiya, how you doing? I'm not gonna put it on my face because I've got makeup on, but it's all over my phone. And then I'm gonna put that towards my face and all those, all those, now I've just got lipstick all on my hand. And then all that is gonna transfer onto my face. That is how germs spread. I'm just gonna wipe it off. And when you're dealing with a tattoo studio or bloodborne pathogens or piercings or a doctor's office, anywhere where things are sterile, that is not okay. Now I just look like I've been fingering myself on my period. Your phone should be absolutely nowhere near your tattoo station. It's the number one rule, bro. Some of you will disagree with this one, but I think a Tattoo a red flag is a tattooer with no tattoos. I, I get it. I get that you may love something but not want it on yourself. But I feel like you need to have tattoos to be able to tell someone how it's feeling. How to be able to know how far to push down for the tattoo machine when you're doing your apprenticeship. 
and there's just something about it, isn't there? My point is, if they don't have any tattoos, it's the same with piercers. If I see a piercer without any piercings, I'm just like, why? This is just my opinion. I think a lot of people would disagree with this. But I feel like if you, if tattoos are your passion and they're what you want to do with your life, why, why do you not, why are you not representing the industry? If the studio is dirty, now I'm not talking about like proper like cockroaches or anything, well I am, but I'm talking more like the basic level of dirty. If you walk in and it's dusty, if you walk in and there is mud on the floor, little things like that. As I understand, right, okay, I understand in like winter you can't keep on top of that throughout the whole day. A studio should be a clean, sterile environment and if there are pets, because there's, ugh, there's studio, I'm a crazy dog person, I love animals, but if there are pets in the studio, or just furniture that hasn't been cleaned, all of that makes my brain go, what else haven't you cleaned? Tattoo studios need to be a clean environment, and if you've got dirt, if you've got dirt around just your basic surfaces, it just makes me think, why haven't you, why, what else haven't you cleaned? I don't know about you, I don't know if you've ever had an infected tattoo. It's not nice. It really isn't nice. And if, and it's so easy to get an infected tattoo if the studio is not clean. Remember that tattoos are essentially an open wound. You are, yes you're, you know, opening the wound and putting some ink in, but it's an open wound. This is why you cannot go swimming after a tattoo. Because you can die. Because if bacteria gets into that open wound, it's introduced into your bloodstream and it's not safe. If you walk in and it's just dirty, 360 your ass and walk back out. And walk to the bakery. Get yourself a cheese straw. They make everything better. If your tattooist says they can tattoo every style. Bullshit. Why you always lying? Tattooing is an art form and just because you are good at one style of tattooing does not mean you'll be good at another style. Like I can knit. It's wool and needles, but I can't crochet. It's essentially the same thing, but it's not the same thing. I go to different tattooists because they tattoo different styles and a tattooist that's good at realism, portraits, will probably not be good at kind of new, new metal, I call it new metal line work, like kind of what I have on my neck. Just kind of bold lines and just basic, basic bitch stuff, but I love it. Obviously there will be the occasion where you get what some artists that are just unicorns and they're just magical at absolutely everything, but nine times out of ten, your tattooist cannot tattoo everything. They cannot tattoo every style. That's why tattoo studios tend to have different artists that specialise in different styles. Because then if someone goes to their studio and asks for like traditional Japanese style, they can go, oh, Kevin, that's Kevin's jam. He can sort you out. Or if someone wants a realistic echidna tattooed on them, they can go, oh, Jasmine, she's great at echidnas. She's great at animals. But if you walk into a studio and there's just one guy, because it's always a guy, <laughs> if there's just one guy, it's like, yeah, I can tattoo that. I can tattoo that. I can tattoo what your friend wants as well. No, you can't, bro. <laughs> Why are you lying? Save yourself the laser money and find an artist that's good at the style you want. If they are a female only tattoo studio, run by a male. But if they're a male run tattoo studio that only hires women, you don't want to go there. Stealing other people's designs and artwork and not changing it and they're just, you know, free willying, happy to do it. Like we are in the age of Pinterest. Every shift I'm at the tattoo studio, someone will come in with a Pinterest tattoo and they're like, I want this, I want this. And it's always a mandala with rose or chandelier. <laughs> hey, they look cute, but that's always what it is. And they're like, this is what I want. If a tattooist is just like, yep, yeah, that's fine, that's great. No, that instantly tells me you do not respect the industry, you do not respect the art or the artist. I think tattoo stealing is just so freaking scummy. I, I'm gonna hold my hands up. I have this tattoo here. Um, where, no, where is it? I have too many. This one, this one. I have this tattoo here, which I got at like 17, 18, and I literally just printed it off DeviantArt. This was before I really cared about tattoos. I just wanted to be tattooed. Ugh, how pathetic. Literally printed it off DeviantArt, went to a tattoo studio, and just got it done. Nothing was changed. 
I didn't get the artist's permission, I didn't buy a tattoo ticket, which I see people doing on Etsy, I love that idea. But I just, I just got it done. Essentially I stole it. I want to get this changed and made it into something my own, because it's not mine. It's I'm walking around with like a loaded gun. <laughs> someone arrest me and I know a lot of people online are like but why does it matter if someone on the other side of the world has the same tattoo as me because it means something to them I have some tattoos that are literally a few lines that I drew I drew them and they were taken by someone else and you know what it doesn't feel good it doesn't feel nice because that's something that was mine. I have my chest tattooed as a f I have a fox, I have two blue roses, I have some bees and violets. And I had someone message me and ask for a clear picture of my chest. This is what I thought initially. But they wanted this so they could get the same tattoo. And I politely said no. And then they, I can't remember what they said, but they basically said they were going to get it done anyway. It's really sh** because I drew this myself and I drew this to fit my body. The roses sit where I want them to sit. The fox sits where I want him to sit. It's a piece of me that I have for me. And when someone takes that, it just shows your in, cre in creativity. Is that a word? It shows that you're just lazy. And yes, you can see something you're like, I want that exactly. A tattooist should be like, I'm not going to copy someone's tattoo. I can change it. I can add a bird here. I can change the colours. I can move this, this, this. I can add, I can make it to fit you. Because this fits that person. I can make this to fit you. And it's always a huge red flag to me if a tattooist is happy to just flat out steal someone else's design. If they don't cover you up. Sternum tattoos, this bit down here, are incredibly popular, especially as the weather gets warmer and people realise, oh, I'm going to go on holiday, I'm going to get a bikini, I'm going to whack my titties out. Sternum tattoos are one of the most popular. Sometimes you your tattoo will require you to remove clothing. I have this thing where if I'm getting tattooed, I will try to dress in a way that I don't have to remove clothing. So if I'm getting like my leg tattooed, I won't wear skinny jeans. I'll wear a long skirt that I can just like hold up and wrap around. But if you are unable to do that, like if you have a strappy top on and you're getting sternum tattooed and it goes up here, you may have to remove your top. Not always, but you may have to. And if you do, the tattooist should provide you with adequate cover, a blanket, a piece of clothing, anything to cover you up. You should not have to lay there, if you're getting your fanny done, you should not have to lay there legs akimbo for everybody to see. I have my sternum tattooed and the tattooist, I pulled my top up um, just above my under boob and I was covered up the whole time. At no point did this wonderful tattooist who I would love to see my tits did not see my boobs. I feel like there is always a way, unless you're straight up getting your asshole tattooed, there is always a way for you to stay covered up and feel comfortable while you're being tattooed. Unfortunately, there's a lot of pervs in the tattoo industry that will take advantage of this. And this is one reason why I so heavily go on recommendations for tattooists, especially from my female friends. If they've gone to a tattooist and they're like, yeah, he was great or she was great or whatever that's how I find my tattooists. Unfortunately, there's a lot of pervs in the industry. And this is something people don't want to talk about. We need to do a video on this. If there's any tattooists out there or piercers that want to do a video about weirdos in the industry, like hit me up, let's do this. So there was a studio here, I think it's rebranded now, that would take on apprentices literally every four or five months and would get them tattooing after about two months. They, they, and guess what? The, ta the apprentices would leave because you cannot learn to safely tattoo in that time. So it was a vicious cycle of, oh, they've got a new apprentice. Oh, they've left. Oh, they've got a new apprentice. Whoop, guess what? They left. If they take on apprentices without a strong portfolio, like you literally, you sh if you want to be a tattooist, straight up, if you want to be a tattooist, you will put the work in. You will have a strong portfolio that you can go into any studio if they're taking apprentices and show them this is what I work, this is my style, this is what I can do, this is the kind of tattoos I want to be able to do one day. If a studio takes you on and you don't have a strong portfolio, 
it's a money grab. They want you there, they're gonna get you tattooing, which may sound like a great thing. You're gonna walk in, you're gonna be tattooing in a couple of months. <sighs> And if you go into a studio and you just say, I want to be a tattooist, I don't have a portfolio, but I can go home and draw one, and they take you on, that's a red flag. You don't want to be there, and they don't really want you there. They want you there to get money out of you, because apprentice tattoos are cheap, you can make a lot of money on apprentice tattoos, and then shove you off, get the next apprentice in. Put the work in, and it will pay off. If they contact you outside of your tattoo appointment to flirt with you this i was chatting to someone on patreon about this actually um a really lovely girl got tattooed at a nice studio and then the tattooist started contacting her got her information and was contacting her outside of the studio trying to hit her up and it's creepy dude we actually had a piercer here many years ago it was a piercer that i used to go to when i was like 16 but he would take phone numbers from consent forms and message you and be like hey you were really cute do you want to go out this is a massive breach of data protection. And uh, you know, it might, oh my God, he reached out to me. No, he stole your information from a legally binding form and proceeded to harass you. <laughs> It's an abuse of power. Don't give in to it, guys. Tattooists are in a position of power, whether we like it or not. You are giving them your body, in a sense, to tattoo and mark forever. They need to remain professional at every point, and that includes after hours as well. If they get mad at you when you ask to move the stencil. So I'm a pretty easily, easily pleased person. You know, you stick a stencil on me nine times out of 10, I'm like, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> Tattoos are my therapy. It's not hard to rub a tattoo stencil off. It is not easy, but it's not hard. The ink all smears and you have to scrub and it, you know, it's a pain in the butt. It's on this person, it's on you forever. You deserve the right to have it exactly where you want it. Now I have seen tattooists get annoyed that people wanna move their stencil. If a tattooist is like, oh, uh, uh, because you keep moving the stencil, oh, like obviously there's a limit, you know, if it gets to the hundredth time and you're still not happy, maybe a tattoo isn't for you, but if they get annoyed when you ask to move the stencil, it's a huge red flag because it shows that they're not really gonna put the effort in with your tattoo either if they're giving, if they're already getting flustered at the first stages of the stencil. Well, this, is, this is kind of an after red flag. This happened to my friend and there's no way she could have stopped it while it was happening. If they change your tattoo design without prior asking you. So my friend got tattooed here in this town by a studio that is still going. Although I don't think the tattooer is there anymore. She got a massive skull tattooed on the side of her neck. Now she actually went into the studio with a small a very small, I think she said it was about two inches, day of the dead skull. And she wanted it tattooed on her neck. Really cute, all black and gray. When she got to the studio, the tattooer said that over time the lines would blur and they wouldn't look great, which was absolutely true. Tattooers should tell you if a design is too small, how it will look in the future, because so many people want these little dainty tattoos and they just don't last. Ink bleeds, it grows with you. So, a tattooer should also tell you if a tattoo won't work. They do need to be a certain size. It was like a two inch tattoo, sugar skull, which admittedly I think it was too much that it wouldn't have worked out. So he asked if she could tattoo it a little bit bigger and he freehanded the new one. So she didn't get to see it. He drew on in Sharpie the new size of the skull and didn't show her. She didn't think anything of it. She was a well-known, trusted tattooer. He asked if he could add colour to it, to which she said just the tiniest little bit because she wanted it to be mainly black and grey. And then he asked if he could add a gold tooth, to which she said no. What happens? She gets the tattoo done. It's on her neck so she can't see it being done. She gets it done. It's freaking massive. It's all colour and it has a gold tooth. She literally hated it from the second she saw it and it's so hard to hide because it's right there. Because the tatterist didn't like, he did not like her original design, he changed it into something he liked but something that she hates and she's the one who has to look at it every day and it's on her body forever. There isn't much she could have done at the time but if, a ta if you hear a story like this where a tattoo has changed a design pretty drastically, massive red flag. 
stay away. She's never gone back to the whole studio, not just that artist. They don't have a very good reputation anymore. <sighs> Listen to people when they tell you a story about a tattooist or a tattoo studio or anything. If someone has a story about anybody, you know, you know, of course it could be a bit catty and a bit malicious, but listen. If they don't talk you through aftercare, this is huge. Now I've been to a lot of different studios and I know what I'm doing with my aftercare. I tend to do the same thing and it works for me. If they do not talk you through aftercare, even if you have a million tattoos, every studio I go to still talks me through aftercare. If you just get a tattoo and they just so long goodbye no freaking way how do you know what i am doing with my aftercare is right they should give you a p i do like i like a form i like an aftercare sheet because i will take good care of that and that talk you know that tells me everything i need to know and um tells me when i need to go back for touch-ups or anything they should talk you through aftercare they should tell you the best things to use for your tattoos there was the whole bapanthan thing everybody used to use bapanthan and they changed their formula and bapanthan is not recommended by tattooers anymore if i hadn't got tattooed since they changed the formula, I would keep using Bapanthan. And it was a tattooist that told me, no, they've changed the formula, it's not good to use anymore, try this instead, try tattoo goo. I like to use unscented cocoa butter for my tattoos. I haven't had a problem with that, but that's just my skin. But a tattooist should 100% give you some form of aftercare, advice, talk you through. They should tell you the basic things. Don't go swimming. If you go swimming after a new tattoo, you can die. You are a walking advert for that tattooist. They should want to make sure that your work, that their work on you is the best it can be. And aftercare is half the part of that. Imagine you go to the doctor and they give you a prescription, but it doesn't say anywhere on that prescription what to do? Is it, do you stick it up your ass? Do you put it in your ear? What do you do? It doesn't say, it just says prescription. It's the same thing, especially if you've never had a tattoo before. You can Google aftercare and there is so much wrong information. A tattooer should be able to tell you what to do, how, what, how to safely look after your tattoo. So that brings us to the end of my personal tattoo, a tattoo studio red flags. Don't be afraid to walk out or leave a studio if you are unhappy. I'm not saying like, oh, you're depressed, you know, so you're just gonna book an appointment and leave. Don't do that. But like, if you, if they are not clean, if you are not comfortable, do not be afraid to leave. This thing, this piece of art is on your body forever. It's maybe an hour or two to the tattooist, but you are the one who's gonna look at it every day. You deserve to feel safe, comfortable and you deserve to feel like you are in the cleanest higher the, you deserve to be in a place that has been sterilized and you know that you are safe listen to people's reviews if someone says to you this tattoo was inappropriate they made rude comments listen follow studio's reputation remember a good tattoo is not cheap and a cheap tattoo is not good it is and as someone that's had so many tattoos covered and so much laser removal that shit is expensive <sighs> i think that's it I, i've been saying all the negatives about tattoo studios and tattooers do not let this put you off getting tattooed because tattooed getting tattooed has been a wonderful thing for me it's built my confidence up it's made me see myself so much in such a better light and i love my body because of my tattoos tattoos and tattooers are can be wonderful places they are safe havens for people to talk and feel comfortable they are just awesome places to be honest but there are unfortunately people that are just in it for the quick buck and not for the love and the passion of tattooing all tattooers and, and tattoo studios are not made equally do your research and remember it's on you forever and you deserve the best if you'd like any recommendations for studios around Ipswich, because that's where I live, so I know all the good ones, uh, hit me up, send pop me a message, and I'll let you know as best I can. Because, hey, gotta spread the word of the good guys. 
But that is it guys. I hope you enjoyed my tattoo or red flags. If you have any that I have missed off, please do comment them below. Let's keep people safe. And if you have any tattoo studio recommendations, pop them in the comment box below. Write the town that they're in, the studio name. Let's give the good artists some love and spread their work around. That is it guys. Thank you so much. I will see you very soon with another video. Much love boobs, take care of yourself, and most of all, stay safe and stay weird.